Hello, my name is Joshua Sanchez. I'm a physics PhD student at the University of Washington, a fellow in the Clean Energy Institute, and a member of the Quantum Materials Laboratory with Professor Jun Hao Chu. Our research seeks to understand fundamental properties of matter by investigating small metallic and semiconductor crystals. These crystals are useful in a wide variety of research topics. Some of these crystals are used in energy science, such as perovskites, which are used in solar cells, and various types of superconducting materials, which could be useful someday in efficient storage and transmission of energy. Other research topics look at new ways to store information in electronics using antiferromagnets. Finally, some of our research projects use crystals which are looking at the fundamental nature of superconductivity, as well as how competing interactions affect strongly correlated materials. In this video, I'm going to show you how we grow and characterize our crystals so that you can see how solid state physicists spend time all day in their lab. We have a wide variety of elements which we use to grow our crystals. The elements are often in powder form or come in small pieces which need to be cut smaller. The powders and pieces are carefully weighed and mixed together according to specific ratios which are established by the literature. Some of these recipes we've developed ourselves. The elements are stored in small heat resistant containers called crucibles. The crucibles then enter glass tubes, which are placed in the furnaces for the growth. Starting from four foot tubes, the glass is first cut and then melted to the correct size. The glass is made from quartz and is very temperature resistant. We use a 2000 degree hydrogen torch to melt it. The melting glass becomes extremely bright, so we wear protective eyewear. Quartz wool insulates the tube and protects the crystal. The crucible enters the tube and is pushed to the bottom. A thin neck is made in the tube, directly above the crucible. This small opening allows us to evacuate all of the air out of the tube, and then rapidly seal the tube, so that our crystal is grown in a very low oxygen environment. This is essential because many elements react strongly with oxygen, especially at high temperatures. At this stage, the sample is ready to be entered into the furnace. We use different kinds of furnaces for different crystal growths, and often have more than 10 kinds of crystals growing at a single time. A growth can take between 1 and 3 weeks, or sometimes even longer. The crystals are often heated above 1000 degrees, and need to be extracted at high temperatures. This is the final step of the growth. 3, 2, 1, go! thousand degrees is hot enough to burn the concrete floor. We do all of our crystal work under microscopes by hand using surgical blades and very fine tweezers. After cooling down the crucible is broken open to reveal shiny crystals. The crystals are about a millimeter in size and are separated into thin sheets which are less than a tenth of a millimeter thick. We use a blade to cut the crystal into a specific shape. Different shapes are used for different kinds of measurements. Gold wires are then glued to the surface of the crystal. These wires are thinner than human hair. 
we use these wires to apply and measure voltages on the crystal. These voltages are the main signal that we use in our studies of the crystal. The finished crystal is carefully adhered to a small puck and put in electrical contact with. The puck is then connected to a special rod which is inserted into the cryostat. This rod allows the crystal to be rotated so that the magnetic field of the cryostat can touch the crystal at different angles. The cryostat is a large chamber filled with liquid helium. This lets the crystal get down to just 2 Kelvin, only 2 degrees above absolute zero, which is colder than space. Our cryostat also is capable of achieving magnetic fields of 14 Tesla, which is 300,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. We use a variety of instruments to measure the properties of our crystals as a function of temperature, magnetic field, and other variables. In just over a year, we've already grown more than 190 crystals. We're working hard to characterize the properties of these materials to further our knowledge of energy science and fundamental physics. Thank you for watching this video.